we have another layout of a proof for you. This is the rhombus diagonals form congruent triangles. Alright, so I'm going to take a step back. We have our proof table, we have our drawing, we have our given and the thing we're trying to prove. Now the drawing didn't start out this way, the drawing was empty inside. These are my notes. So if notes like this help you to do a proof, then you should do that too. Drawings usually help in math problems. So imagine that this is just an empty rhombus, okay? It's given that MNOP is a rhombus, MNOP, okay? And that the line PN is 6 and PM is 5. Well, that right here, that PN was 6, was a hint to me that I needed to draw a diagonal. So I drew a second one because I just thought, what the heck, but I didn't make it as dark. So I knew I was going to deal with this diagonal, so I put that in, okay? So we need to prove that, and to keep it from, you know, being a jumble of angles like this, I just color-coded them. We need to prove that the red triangle is congruent to the pink one, congruent to the green one, congruent to the blue one, that these are all congruent to each other, okay? That's what we're trying to prove. So, our first statement is that MNOP is a rhombus, and that's given. So, because I'm trying to prove that these triangles are congruent, I need to prove that they have equal parts. So, to say they had equal sides, MN is equal to 5, because PM is given, see that? So, because a rhombus is an equal lateral and has equal sides, I was able to say that all of these are 5. Okay, so now I've proved that they have equal sides. Now, PN is 6. Okay, that's the diagonal. That's given. So, if you split it in half, PX is 3, X is the center, and NX is 3, because diagonals in a rhombus bisect each other. Now, if you have a problem with any of these, this is in video 134 that I did, okay? So, PM is 5, that's given. PN and MO are perpendicular, because diagonals of a rhombus are perpendicular, okay? These are perpendicular. So, I've proven perpendicular, so we can prove right angles, okay? That's the next step. So, now I'm going to say that MXP, see everything has an X in the center? That means all these angles with the X as the vertex, okay? All of the angles, this one, this one, this one, and this one, all the ones where X is the vertex, they are all right angles. Perpendiculars form right angles, see? We've proven that they were perpendicular. Now we say that perpendiculars have right angles, okay? So now I'm going to say that PXM, the red one, and that NXM, the pink one, the blue one, and the green triangle are right triangles because of this perpendicular thing that we put in the reasons, okay? A right triangle has a right angle, all right? So, we've proved that there were right angles and that uh, right angles make right triangles, so now we can say that PXM, the red one, is congruent to the pink one because of the hypotenuse leg principle, okay? The hypotenuse leg principle is from video 108. If you don't know what that is, go back and watch it. But it pretty much says two right triangles are congruent if corresponding hypotenuse legs of one, hypotenuse leg of one triangle are congruent to the hypotenuse and leg of another triangle. So... Because the hypotenuse, this outside orange line, and this MX line are congruent to each other, we've used hypotenuse leg, okay? Now, because we said that they're congruent to each other because of HL, we can now say that all of these rectangles, the red one, the pink one, the blue one, and the green one, are all congruent to each other because of the hypotenuse leg. Okay? So, again, if you don't know what that is, go back to watch video 108. Alright? 
So, that is the layout of a proof for rhombus diagonals form congruent triangles. And our next one is going to be on formulas for the area of rhombus, rhombi. More than one is rhombi. I hope to see you there.